to a member for Lethbridge. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. We often talk about budgets as if we're just talking about money, as if it's just a spreadsheet full of cash. But we have to take a step back and ask the question, well, where did that money come from and why is it being spent? And the answer to that, of course, is people. The money came from people, and supposedly the money is being spent in support of people. Interestingly enough, it's the same people that pay in as benefit. When we talk about this, we're talking about the nation of Canada. We're talking about the people who call this place home. And the government is entrusted to take their money and spend it on their behalf for things that are supposedly supposed to benefit them. So let's talk about the people. When I think about the budget, I think about Raylene, one of my constituents. She goes to the University of Lethbridge, she studies really hard, she takes a full course load, and she works a part-time job. She's optimistic about her future because she's confident in herself. She's confident in her skills and her abilities. She's confident in her work ethic. But when she thinks about her future in terms of finding a job or in terms of being able to purchase a home, she begins to have doubts. Doubts because this government has done little to nothing to remove the gatekeepers or to bring down the cost of living that would prevent her from being able to buy that first home. I think about John. I think about John who is a local beef producer in my riding of Lethbridge. He lives in the county and he operates with his sons. He hopes to pass his business down to his family. And of course, in the meantime, they're just looking to not only make ends meet, but hopefully generate a bit of a profit and be able to provide jobs. Not to mention, of course, they're producing food, not only for our area, but for, well, the world. I think about John, and I think about the red tape that has been put in place. I think about the language that is used against him as a farmer. I, I think about the carbon tax and the implications that it has on him and his business. I, I think about the overall lack of gratitude and the misconceptions that are, that are put towards him. I think about Tannis. Tannis is a mom to two young children. Tannis just started a new business in the last few months here, and she's hoping to make a go of it. But she recognizes that the input costs are only going up. And so she wonders whether or not it's feasible to keep going, but she still dreams of big things, and again, has fantastic work ethic. She'll continue to work hard, and hopefully she'll make a go of it, but she is worried. She's worried about affordability issues, whether it's putting gas in her car, or being able to heat her home, or being able to put groceries on her table for her family. I think about James. James wrote to me with regards to Bill C-11. He's a digital first creator, and he wonders about his future and whether or not he can make a go of it. He knows that under Bill C-11, the government is going to look to control what people can see and hear and post online. He knows that this is censorship, that it's a far overreach of this government. James is worried about his future because the government is in effect building a firewall around him and preventing him from being able to reach the global audience that he hopes to reach. James wonders about his future. I think about Marge and John, an elderly couple who came into my constituency office not too long ago with their heating bill in their hand and tears coming down their face. The image will forever be in my mind. Why? Because Marge and John are people people who are trying to make ends meet on a fixed income. Marge and John are having to make a choice between filling their prescription, heating their home, or eating proper meals. That's not a choice someone in their late 70s should have to make, as they're supposedly supposed to be enjoying their golden years. I think about Alan. Alan is a law-abiding firearms owner in my riding who enjoys hunting with his buddies. He enjoys putting deer in his freezer to be able to feed his family and maybe being able to share an elk steak with friends. I think about him and his responsible use of his rifle. And then I think about this government demonizing him as if he's the criminal. Meanwhile, this government turns a blind eye to our borders and very basic security. I think about the fact that, that crime has gone up by 32% since the Liberals took government. I think about the fact that street gang murders have gone up by 92%. And yet, Alan, 
Alan is the one being treated like a criminal. These are just a few, a very few, of the people, the faces that I think about when I consider this budget and its implications for Canada. Budgets are about people. They're not about a spreadsheet. They're not about a number. They're not about a percentage. They're not about debt. They're not about GDP. Yes, all of that factors in, but at the end of the day, the budget is about people. It's about whether or not the government understands what is required to support the people of this country. Imagine you have this, this wad of cash, and it's in your right pocket, and someone comes along and they take it out, and they put a few nickels and dimes into your left pocket. And they expect you to applaud them as if you've done them a favor, when in actuality, they're far worse off. Budget 2023 feels a little like that. It feels like this government is wanting accolades for taking a wad of cash out of the pockets of Canadians and replacing it with a few nickels and dimes, as if they've done the Canadian population a big favour. Meanwhile, the affordability crisis continues. Meanwhile, the housing crisis continues. Meanwhile, crime continues to skyrocket. Meanwhile, business investment is being driven out of our country. And yet the government stands back and says, applaud us. Look how well we've done. But this government forgets. They forget where that money came from. They forget that they took it out of the right pocket to put it into the left pocket. Now, of course, not all of it went back into the left pocket, only a few nickels and dimes. This government forgets the people that entrusted them to govern. And in doing that, they've lost sight of the most important things. Canadians in this budget were looking for lower taxes. Canadians in this budget were looking for spending to be reined in. Canadians in this budget were looking for effective measures around housing prices and affordability. That's what Canadians were looking for in this budget. Instead, what Canadians got was a government that decided to pour gasoline on a fire. And of course, that fire is called inflation. Now, we already have the highest rates of inflation in 40 years. And of course, that's to do with our Prime Minister and the fact that he made the determination to incur more debt than every single other Prime Minister combined. In all of Canada's history, all debt combined, our Prime Minister, the leader of the Liberal Party of Canada, managed to spend more. And so inflation continues to rise. And as inflation rises, so does the cost of living. And as the cost of living rises, Canadians become less and less hopeful. The government likes to brag about their grocery rebate. I suppose some might call it the sexy item of the budget. It's the thing that this government was hoping would save them, that Canadians would applaud them for. Again, take a big wad of cash out of one pocket and a few nickels and dimes into another. Applaud us, applaud us, this government says. Well, let's talk about the grocery rebate, shall we? Yes. Let's talk about the fact that because of inflationary measures, groceries are going up by about $1,100 per family this year. And then let's talk about that grocery rebate and the fact that it's less than $500 for that same family. So you do the math. This government is making decisions that is driving up the cost by $1,100 and they're giving $500. Are Canadian families better off? Absolutely not. But applaud us, applaud us, this government says. Send accolades our way while they take the wad of cash from the right, right pocket and put a few nickels and dimes in the left. What this government doesn't understand is that a healthy economy where people are working 
thriving, contributing, cannot be replaced with government spending. Canadians deserve so much more. They are the problem solvers, the solution makers, and the wealth generators that this country needs. And they...